good evening once again <coughs> okay camera it's working yeah okay fine so let us solve one more problem on springs now this time i'm making a small change the change here is that if you look at my yesterday's video uh let me go back to my yesterday's ppt now you see here on the first day i did something like this i made a block incident on another block with a uniform velocity of 1 meter per second. And then I asked you what was the compression, maximum compression. The next day I showed you, instead of having uh, a uniform velocity, let me assume one of these blocks is given an impulse. Okay, That means this object is now moving with a velocity. I just gave a force and I just uh, pulled it by a velocity V0 when this was at rest. And then I asked you what was the maximum elongation. Okay, Then we took up the center of mass concept and then we try to solve it. Now, there is no velocity. I am applying a constant force this side and I am applying a constant force this side. Okay, I am pulling the objects both the ways like this. Pulling it like this, I am pulling it like this. Then, if you stood, then the question asked was, find the distance moved by each block. So, see, the masses are not same. Okay, this could be 1 kg, this could be 10 kg, doesn't matter. Okay. So as a result of it, my question is, what is the distance moved by each block? Which one will move farther? Okay, I, I did not ask you which one will move farther. Okay, I just asked you what? Okay, so how do you find the distances? That's a question. Okay, might be m two might might move might uh, move by a distance of x one, uh, x two, and this might move by a distance of x one, and x one will not be equal to x two until unless m one and m two are equal. What we need to find in terms of m one, m two, and f one. Okay, what are these values? This is the question. The first response I received from the students is that they said that, see, there is a force F applied here. When there is no force applied here, definitely this object will start moving like this. There is a force applied here also. So, since there is no force applied over here, it starts moving like this. And they got confused somewhere over here. And they said that the net force acting here is F minus F is equal to Kx, or X should be zero, which means there should not be any extension in the spring. Now, the misconception in this case is that they assumed that one of the forces is acting at a time. Okay, when this force is acting, when this force is acting, there's no force acting here. When this force is acting, there's no force acting here. That's what they assume. They are incorrect, right? So therefore, because simultaneously, both the forces are acting here. So therefore, this answer is definitely incorrect. Only a few students did this mistake. I told them this is what it is. And brilliantly, some of the students did something like this. They thought, okay, so many times in the classroom, we say, a spring can be approx approximated to that of a string. Okay, now you see how, what are all the misconceptions they have. They assume this to be a string like this. And then they said, sir, anyway, there's a force applied here. Again, the same problem. And they said, since it is like this, I can find out what is the net acceleration, which should now be equal to total force divided by total acceleration, total mass, right? So A equal to F by F1 plus M2. And then you apply Newton's second law for this one, and you say m2a equal to k times, okay, it should have been x2 here. It should have been x2. So x2 should have been equal to m2a divided by k. From here, you see x2 equal to m2a by k, or substituting the value of f, f uh, sorry, value of a, value of a here, I get this big expression. Okay, they thought something like this. Similarly, you can also get it for m1a is equal to kx1, and this is x1 over here. And they got an expression like this also. Okay. This is also incorrect. What was the assumption here? What was the misconception? The misconception is if this force applies, this is not there. If this force applies, this is not there. Right. So that was a misconception. But unfortunately, what is happening here? Both the forces are being applied simultaneously, which means what? This will move like this. This will move like this. The extension in the spring will be so large. Right. Now, let me calculate what is the total extension. So now I hope you understood the misconceptions. Okay, while solving problems of this sort, since you have been accustomed or used to solve problems, that is two blocks connected by a string. Okay, you many times you make a mistake like this. Okay, so, so as a result of it, you should understand that you are solving spring problems and you should do it appropriately. Now, when you are pulling, it is something like you and your brother are fighting with each other for one rubber band. You have an elastic band. You are pulling it this way, your brother is pulling, your sister is pulling it and the other way, and you see that there's an extension in this way, right? So therefore, the total force, now you see the force, 
the first force f is in the forward direction minus of minus f is in the opposite direction okay this should be equal to the net force why did they put negative here why did they put f minus of this value okay the reason is because f minus of minus f is minus f is the negative force over here but the net force i want to find the net force this should be equal to the total extension kx kx0 and the kx0 or in other words now i can write x0 should be equal to f minus of minus f would be 2f so 2f divided by k now what is this this is the net extension that we have got okay now what's the next step after this now we need to we need to look at okay what is the distance moved by the first object the distance moved by the first object is nothing but x1 is equal to how do i write what is the distance moved by the first object i can write m2 into x0 divided by m1 plus m2 hey how did i get this one you can always ask right the reason is you see when two forces are acting like this okay initially when two forces are not acting no force is acting here uh, the center of mass of this system could have been lying somewhere over here let us say okay i'm just giving an approximation i'm not drawing it at the center somewhere at this point okay now when two equal forces are acting then will the center of mass change center of mass should not change because whatever effect you observe here same effect is also observed there and there is frictionless here so therefore the center of mass should not change now if i write the center of mass from here okay i know the distance here will be x2 distance here is x1 so oh, i already written it here right so as a result of it this x2 can be written as m1 x0 divided by m1 plus m2 i hope you have learned this one so how do you get it if you ask me uh, how do you get it can can you tell can you tell about it okay so what you can do is you can find out the concept of center of mass xcm is equal to m1 x1 plus m2 x2 divided by just a moment m2 here m2 x2 divided by m1 plus m2 you can use this formula and try to arrive at this okay if not do comment on the section i will try to solve it in the next video now so when you have something like this now what do we have for x not we already derived so substitute this value which will be m2 2 m2 f divided by k into m1 plus m2 this is x1 similarly x2 should be equal to 2 times m1 f divided by k into m1 plus m2 okay so therefore both these solutions are incorrect and you need to do something like this what did i do i borrowed this value of x1 and x2 from the center of mass concept and then substituted for the value of x0 and that's how i get this expression i hope you have understood this video now you would have or maybe i will ask you a question okay this would be my next video the question is see two we two forces which are acting like this okay you assume the center of mass concept and did it now let us say for example if the forces are not equal okay let us say this is f2 and this is f1 then what can happen and do you have an answer for this now again don't say okay i'm going to substitute instead of f i put f1 plus f2 or f1 plus f2 divided by 2 these things will not work okay so think about it what can be done and wait for tomorrow's lecture tomorrow we'll see okay how to arrive at a problem like this a solution for this problem okay so thank you friends for watching this video until the end and see you back once again tomorrow evening same time at night 7 pm and please like watch share and subscribe to my channel for further updates thank you